Hi friends! As you can see, I am not on my rolly chair because I'm at Maddie's house. Maddie is a little westy, I babysit, so when I am here, I'll film some videos. And if it's your first time here, hi, I'm Alicia. I love to do reviews, tutorials, and talk about some Fude. And a huge thank you to Fude Beauty for sending these brushes. Today, we are speaking on their FO series, their fox hair brushes. I have a video covering the first collection that released a few years back. And in this one, we'll cover the new four additions to the FO line. I also have a post on my community board talking about quote unquote cruelty free in regards to Fude, clarifying what that means in the context text of Japanese standards. If you have any questions about the bristles, I'll make sure to post the community link down below in a pinned comment. And I'm sorry for sounding nasally today. It might sound echoey as well because the ceilings are quite high here, but my nasaliness comes from the fact that my allergies are on one today. The Fox Hair Collection from Chikohoro is one of their most popular series because I think Fox Hair is in a league of its own in terms of softness. Just the the plushiness about it, which I think very different from squirrel and goat. Goat hair I consider to be a multitasking bristle that takes on many mediums, and especially if it's undyed, you can use it both with liquid and powders. When you get into the dyed goat hair, you will have to exclusively use those brushes with powder products because cream and liquid mediums will ruin the bristles for dyed goat hair. And on the other side of the spectrum, you have gray squirrel, which is coveted to be one of the most softest bristles out there, beyond silky in feel and in touch, and preferably used by those who easily get irritated by too rough of a bristle, and the squirrel hair just feels like like lightweight silk on the skin, but because of its more wispy nature, it's not going to pick up as much as goat hair. So for those who want a heavier dosing of pigmentation, they might use a goat hair brush, especially in the eyeshadow category of things. But for those who want more of a wash of color, that's what you'll get from applying makeup with a squirrel brush on the eyes as well as face and cheeks. If you don't want a lot of powder on the skin, gray squirrel, if you want lighter washes of blush and bronzer, gray squirrel, especially on the eyes. I know it went a little heavy on the eyes today for the demo, but if you want more of a wash of color on the eyes, gray squirrel, and it's nearly undetectable. The feel of this bristle on the skin is just heavenly. What's in the middle? Silver Fox. Silver Fox hairs have a unique feel and experience on the skin. It's still pleasantly soft, but has a more plush experience in its application as opposed to goat and squirrel. Squirrel, very silky soft, but there's something very elastic and bouncy from Silver Fox hair. And the way that it's bundled, I think unique to these brushes and why people use them. Because if they want the softness of gray squirrel, but they want more pickup like they find in goat hair, this is where I feel Silver Fox delivers those expectations. And the fact that we have brushes in a range from face, cheeks to eyes, I just think makes it for a comprehensive experience to feel just that elastic elastic, bouncy plushiness on all areas of your face. And now you have fox hair, which is just so plush, elastic, and it almost has a bounce to it. I think very different from those bristles, and especially those who still want that soft feel, but maybe more pickup than what you get from gray blue squirrel brushes. And I think that's where the Vox Hair brush sets excels in, where the application is just perfect. I think intermediate in terms of product pickup on both eyes and and cheeks and face. The limitation is that one should only use fox hair with powder products. So if you love your liquids and your creams, then I would use synthetic brushes or synthetic natural mix or undyed goat hair for those products. And when you want a flawless application of powder for it to look softening on the skin, that blurred effect, fox hair, fox hair. Just so you can see, I, I know you can't detect the feel on screen, but it just feels so, it's almost like a blanket 
a brush blanket is how I would describe a fox hair brush. Again, very different from goat and squirrel and specific in terms I feel in the product pickup and application. Let's begin with the F09 powder brush. This retails for $124 and you can see it's just chock full of silver fox hair. Bigger than the F01, this is the brush that originally released with the first set. Much bigger than the F03, a smaller cheek brush than the F01. So F09, the purpose this brush serves, and I read here from foodabeauty.com, luxurious volume with a smooth, silky touch. You can be sure to get an even and clean product finish on your skin. Now, because of the size here, I used it to apply Wayne Goss's translucent powder, and I think you can assume from its design that it's ideal for powder application, whether it be loose or pressed. It gets the product on the skin quickly, and although it might look round online. It is flat on both sides, but when you press the brush onto your skin, it has a lovely splay. The density is there. You can detect it, but it still has lovely flow. So it's not going to move your foundation. So don't fret. You see how packed it is with bristles. You might think it'll leave behind texture, or again, it will move the foundation when applying your powder. No, the silkiness is still present despite how many bristles are found in this brush and I think it an ideal tool to apply your loose powder and also to finish with yes it's on the dense side but again it has beautiful flow it will not disturb your makeup if you're one who follows up with a finishing powder then this brush will be great for that task again it just has beautiful plushness and I say density but in, in reference to how many bristles are in here, but don't let the word density deter you from expecting it to not feel silky and just, you can feel it for yourself if you buy it. I know it's expensive, but just as you saw, we, we got a lot in here, okay? Now, compared to the F01, if you already have the F01, you don't necessarily need the F09. The F09 is definitely a step up in Lux. The F01 can accomplish the same tasks that I described when speaking on the F09. The advantage the F01 has over F09 is that probably more multitasking. Yes, you can use this to apply your loose and press powder, but I think more ideal for bronzer application because you can get the brush right into the hollows of your cheekbones. Whereas yes, because the F09 is flat and you have a slight taper here, you can nudge that part of the brush into the hollows of your cheeks and get nice bronzer. I use my Linda Halber Cosmetics Infinity Glam Palette. I applied that blush color because I actually did not pack a powder bronzer with me on this trip and maybe not an appropriate color to apply as a bronzer. However, if you're one to favor a bigger fluffy brush for your bronzer application, then the F09 will definitely give you that bronzing experience. Next up, which was a brush I almost bought, but I held back because given the fact that I have created many videos for Fuday Beauty, I had a feeling that they were going to continue this series with me, so they sent me the FO10. Let me tell you about this freaking brush. FO10 retails for $24, and you see it's tapered from top to bottom. I think a unique shape in that they wanted to recreate that fingertip application design. And of course, I had to test this brush with the finicky, sparkly cocktail textures that exist in Supreme Mauves. I picked up Strip Down, which was one of the tougher shades to work with, and this brush successfully picked up not only the sparkly arclys, but the base color and the way it evenly distributed the shadow across my lid. And I used the edges of the brush to fluff the edges of that shadow, which if you wanted, if you have Supreme Mauve and you wanted to do the one and done eyeshadow moments, then the fluffiness of the F10 gently blurs the shadow above the crease. And it, 
a phenomenal for one and done moments. The formula that exists in Suku palettes, very silky, satiny in feel, even the sparkly shades, you can use the F10 to apply it on the majority of your lid and then turn the brush on its side and gently flick the edges of that color and you're done. You can use the edge of the brush to take shadow under your lash line as well. Yes, a little big for the inner corner, but for the majority of your eye look, you're done with the F10. And I was pleasantly surprised to see and to experience how efficient this brush is with hard to pick up textures, which I think we all have in our eyeshadow collection, textures that we deal with, whether we use a finger application, sponge tip applicators, we use our setting spray to get a little more slick in, in the application, but the F10, I cannot wait to use this brush with other shadows that I feel need a little more pick up from the pan. Phenomenal. And of course, with these sparklers, if this brush can pick these up, I could only surmise that it will pick up the more smooth, buttery textures that are found in other palettes. If you were wondering about how it does with blending mattes to the crease, I would recommend you use F05. This was in the original collection. Compared to the F10, you see the F05 is longer and it has even flatness on both sides where you see the taper is very much steep on the F10 and there's more movement here in F05. So I use this brush to apply the matte color through my crease on both with eyes and the length allows for great blending here where you can rely on the swirl and twirl method to refine the edges of your blend also you can use this to place shadow on the lash line a little big unless you wanted to go the grungy route where you love a lot of color under the lash line but i think this is an appropriate time talk about the F07. The F07 is a round feral eyeshadow brush. This retails for $23. The advantage to having a brush that although shaped like a pencil, it has great length, which lends flexibility to the tip. It won't feel as stiff, especially if you use this for lower lash line shadow application. Superb for this task. Because if you like color under your lash line, you don't want it to drop too low. You want to keep it a little tighter, just a little tighter, but maybe to create more haze. Not as much haze as if you were to apply shadow with the F010. That color will truly drop more with excuse me, the F05, so many numbers. If you have sensitive eyes and you found when applying shadow on your lower lash line, you start to tear up, it starts to tickle, it feels uncomfortable. The silky smooth design of the F07, again, because yes, the bristles are a little longer than a another pencil brush that you've seen, there is a slight taper. It looks more taper on line, but I feel when you wash it, it comes out a little domed, a little domed at the top, which makes it, I think, ideal to place shadow on the outer corner. I did so with the shade Prestige from Supreme Mauve's, and I applied it on the outer part of my lash line and then used circular motions to place more color on the outer lid. So a fantastic brush, not only for lower lash line application, but outer lid, schmokety schmoke, as well as inner corner highlight. Fantastic for that. Small enough to get precise, if you love to be more precise, then naturally, yes, you would use a smaller brush. But for me, if I were to, let's say, apply the white shadow from BH Cosmetics Lost in Los Angeles palette, and I wanted that white shadow to appear prominently on the inner corner, then this brush is perfect. It'll pick up enough, but will still keep the color where it needs to stay to create that washed out, blown out highlight effect. Fantastic for Arch of the Brown highlight here I amazing amazing compared to f06 f06 is the flat shader so from the side here from profile you see f07 is a bigger brush also in addition to it being a round ferrule whereas the f06 is flat love the f06 if you want even more precision with your shadow application, then yes, using the F06 
for lower lash line application outer lid a little more stiff it's still soft but a little more stiff because of the taper here it's not going to have the same flexibility as the F07. I think both can be used successfully depending on how you like to apply your shadow, uh, the precision tasks you like to perform with your brushes. They will find themselves in your routine somehow, some way. However, if you don't have the F06 and you're wondering between the two, I like the F07. I think there's a little more versatility here with the rounder design, a little more bristle here. This is great if you have small hooded eyes. You need to just nudge the color here on the lid as well as the inner corner. Keep the color tighter on the lower lash line, depending on your eye size size, eye shadow style will determine which brush you think will be best. And lastly, we have the F08. This retails for $21, a classic eye shadow liner brush, which listen, I prefer these brushes. Well, I guess it depends on the day. I do love a flat liner, especially when it has this flexibility. So it's not super short, but not too long either. And it has the right amount of flow where I think it ideal to place any shadow liner along your lash line to create that wing, to maintain control, but great pickup, meaning you're not going to be there all day trying to build your shadow wing on your lash line. And there won't be any skipping, which I think optimal when trying to create a shadow wing, especially with a powder shadow. It's just phenomenal. And also if Let's say you didn't want to wing out your, your shadow fine. You just stop right at the edge of your lash line. Maybe you want more of a darker color on the outer bracket of your lower lash line. You can use this brush for the inner corner as well. Great for the brow bone since it is flat. You can place it perfectly there so it's not too much shadow, just enough to give the arch highlight and maybe blur the edges of the shadow that came up from your crease. And the unique shape found in the original collection was the F02. This is a foundation brush. I don't think it has been decided or I did not confirm whether this was okay to use with liquid products. I don't think it is and you wonder, well, what do I use it for? I like to use this brush to buff in powder foundation. So if you're not into that, maybe not a great choice for you, but I just love that it's here. You know, I feel it has to be a part of the family. So those are the four new brushes added to the Chikohoro FO series, beautifully designed series. Everything from the silver fox hair to the brushed forest green feral and the wood design, the exposed wood, which I think adds such a, a zen natural element to the design, very different from the Z series and from their other series in the Chikohoro brand. And you know, I'm going into a little spiritualness here. I understand how people feel about the bristles being farmed and the foxes are farmed in Japan and what's ever left over the brush makers use to create the brushes. Death is a terrible thing. Cruelty is a terrible thing. I went into this further on my post and the Japanese truly feel that because the animals were not intentionally farmed or harmed or, or killed for brushes specifically, that the brushes came from what's left over from those actions, they still feel that it was cruelty free. Do with it as you like, but that is the information. That is the truth. If you love Hude and you feel these brushes are worth having, are worth investing in, despite the history, the background of how these bristles are acquired, then there you go. Yes, although these animals were killed, whether for fur or what have you, to not have those materials go to waste. And if they are able, these materials are made into tools that can last for a very long time to repurpose the materials, I think is a more sustainable process than just throwing these hairs materials away. That's how I understand it. And again, you definitely can have a different point of view. That is totally fine. Uh, just to give you my point of view, if you're asking, why do I uh, have brushes like this. Well, I just think these are beautiful tools. And the fact that 
the Japanese have been doing this for years and years and years. And the artistry and craftsmanship that goes into creating these brushes is beyond my comprehension. And for them to utilize the materials in this way, I think it makes not only the tools unique, but the experience unique as well. And yeah, if you are interested in buying any of these, my links are affiliated. I am an affiliate of Fude Beauty. Your consideration is always appreciated. Not forcing you to buy this, especially because I understand that this information came to light and there was a lot of discussion around it. You choose what you think is best for your morals, for your life, for all those elements. And I'm just here to help you decide which one if you want to buy, if you had your eye on these. If you don't have any brushes. I know it's tough to dial it down, but I would always shoot for cheek powder, eyeshadow, and liner. So to quickly show, I would do F03. This is the cheek brush, smaller than the F01, much smaller than the F09, around the same size as the F04, a little bigger, but you can use this for loose powder, pressed powder, blush, bronzer. Then I feel you gotta get the F10. The F10 is your quintessential shadow lid lay down brush. And then you can go into the F07, which you can use for inner corner, lower lash line. You can even pull some color through the crease. If you have smaller eyes, then maybe this trio will work out, or more so the duo of eyeshadow brushes. If you have bigger eyes, then I would go with the F05. The thing is, if you're fine with applying a metallic with your finger, then maybe you don't get the F10, that you get the F05, you get your shadow liner, the F08, and you know what? Maybe, listen, maybe you just add in the F10, just add in the F10. That's a great trio as well. That's just narrowing it down a little bit if you can't get all of them. I know on the wish list, all of them might be there, but your, your wallet's like, excuse me. So that is the breakdown. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Again, a huge thank you to Fude Beauty for not only sending me these brushes, but also clarifying the information in regards to the bristle sources. I will see you down in the comments, fam. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial. Fude Beauty Extravaganza, monthly favorite or vlog. Take care and I will see you again soon.